<laughs> okay. Um, here's uh, signal flags. And yes, the signal flags were used frequently during the war. Here's some more headquarters flags. Uh, if you were a Confederate general, you got to design your own flag. So that was a Confederate general's headquarters flag. Another one. That, I love that one. Debney Mori down in Mobile, Alabama used that flag. And there's another one. Now, uh, let me change the topics a little bit and talk about our what we're doing as a museum to conserve these things. Because it's an invaluable national treasure that we're sitting on. Now, we've got a special uh, flag vault that the, it's about 60 degrees in the humidity if it varies uh, by one degree from 40 degrees uh, of 40% uh, humidity. You know, every alarm in the world goes off. And uh, you see these boxes. They're flags stored in the, in the boxes. If it's a wool flag, you can, uh, you can fold it up okay. If it's a silk flag, if you fold it, it'll crack and splinter. And I'll show you some silk flags in a second. But a wool flag, you can uh, uh, fold it up. Here's a wool flag being uh, prepared for, for storage to be folded up. And here's somebody putting a folded flag back on the shelf. Now, uh, a lot of these flags uh, got this sewing treatment uh, in the 1930s and 40s. A woman named Richie said, you know, that the, the way you displayed a flag was you hung it. Well, the weight of the cloth itself was pulling these flags apart. And so this woman invented this sewing machine stitch that you can see is just a patchwork stitch like this that you sewed it all over the flag and there you could fly. It was the best conservation efforts at the time. The Star Spangled Banner was Richie stitched, as, as, as they call it, Richie stitched. Um, there's only one problem is 50 or 60 years after you do that, these little stitches begin to tear apart the fabric that they're there to protect. So now to conserve the stupid flag, what you got to do is take all those stitches out of it. And you got to do them one at a time with a pair of uh, magnifying glasses and tweezers. And it is really um, a heck of a problem. This is a flag treated in the 40s. That's the flag of the first Virginia. Uh, it was captured in Pickett's Charge. By the way, there were 15 flags carried in Pickett's Charge. We've got 13 of them in our collection, and that is, is one of them. Now you can see somebody taking those little stitches uh, out of the, the flag. Uh, and it can take maybe 100 hours of work to do one, one flag. But uh, you, you get very nice results. There's a flag uh, before conservation. By the way, uh, notice it's in two pieces. Uh, the War Department and us thought that it was two different flags for 100 years. And what we found out uh, through thorough research was it was two pieces of the same flag. What had happened was in... Uh, the spring of 1865, there was a fight in which this piece of the flag was torn off of the flagstaff in hand-to-hand -hand combat by uh, a Union soldier. He turned it into headquarters as I captured a flag. This part of it stayed on the flagpole, stayed with the flagpole and the unit for another month when that unit was captured. So this part was captured at a different date and a different place. And it was only through research that we were able to put the two pieces together again. But after conservation, this is what the flag looks like now. So you can see it's been flattened out and those stitches uh, tended to make the uh, fabric curl up. It's been flattened out, but all the holes and gaps have been left because modern curatorial techniques say don't mess with the original. Don't try to make it look pretty. And uh, 50 years ago, people wanted them to look pretty. Here's a uh, Lancaster Gray's flag, Virginia State flag, before treatment and after treatment. Uh, doesn't look like that much, but that. Uh, uh, by the way, these. Uh, th this is uh, an oil painting on the silk flag. Every time you see one of these flags, it's an oil painting on a silk flag. Here's the Guilford Gray's from Guilford, North Carolina, where the Revolutionary War Battle of Guilford Courthouse was was fought. 
it came to us in a somebody had put it, folded it up and put it in a frame. Take it out of the frame, that's what it looks like. Uh, the, the flip side of it, you see the seal on this side. The flip side has a big picture, and this is what the picture looked at like when we were uh, putting it together. And now that's what it looks like, uh, where you've been able to recreate by taking these little pieces, and literally sometimes they're, they're uh, detached pieces about the size of your fingernail, and putting those little pieces back together um, and conserving them. The Marion Artillery uh, before and after conservation. Take a look at that flag, by the way. The Marion Artillery was from South Carolina. Uh, you see that the, what's written on it is God and our rights. You see a cross pattern there. You see a cross pattern a lot in Confederate flags. Uh, and you see references to God a lot in Confederate flags. The, the, one of the big debates during the Civil War, a lot of religious people during the Civil War, whose side was God on? Because both sides prayed to God. This is actually a, uh, uh, a woman's scarf. It's a wedding scarf that was made into a flag of Marian artillery. Here's the uh, 7th Virginia Infantry, another Pickett's Charge flag before conservation. You see no holes in it because when they Richie stitched it, they patched up all the holes. Now that's what it looks like. That was a brand new flag at Pickett's Charge. It had been issued to Pickett's troops two weeks before. And they are uh, uh, bullet holes from one battle. Uh, this is the 5th Kentucky Cavalry. Uh, flag again. You see the, the the cross pattern, and after conservation. By the way, this is the flip side of it. On to victory. Uh, instead of God in our rights or liberty or death, on to victory. Here's the Powhatan troop flag. Remember, you you saw that one earlier, and that's what it looked like after conservation. Uh, this flag, that's the Dolly Hill flag. It just got back from conservation. I don't have a, a slide of it, but it looks looks absolutely fabulous. Uh, there's a flag that's just been sent off for conservation. Uh, a, a, a dentist from Tennessee had a great grandfather in that unit, and he paid to have it conserved. Uh, the Second Maryland Infantry. We're doing. Members are donating to a fund to get that uh, flag conserved. <coughs> the 58th Virginia Infantry. That's that's a Richie stitched flag. <coughs> excuse me, and therefore more expensive because all those stitches have to be taken out. A group of reenactors are saving money to get that conserved. Here's the the Caroline Grays from Caroline County, Virginia. You can see the condition, that it's just fragments now. The, the, the oil painting has deteriorated to, to the fact that it's just fragments. Here's uh, close-ups of the fragments, reverse side. We want to get that thing conserved uh, before we start losing these little pieces and you can't put them back together again. Um, here's a couple more flags that are real hot on our list of flags to be conserved. I love that, that bottom one, the Princess Anne Cavalry from, from Virginia Beach. Okay, where we stand in our conservation program now is 34 flags have been conserved for exhibition. That's 34 out of 510. So we've got a long way to, to go. Uh, 27 of those were sponsored by groups or, or individuals. And uh, so we're working on that uh, program now. Uh, we are uh, continuing to sponsor research on these flags to identify ones that are still unidentified. What you do with that research is, if it was captured, you know the date that it was captured, where it was captured, and the unit that captured it. So you figure out who were they fighting that